Hello, I'm Jerry Holland and I'm with the Bartow County Master Gardeners. This presentation on fall vegetable planting is brought to you by the UGA Extension Service. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. Thank you. What do we mean by fall planting? We will see some examples of crops that can be harvested before frost and after frost, crops that overwinter and can be harvested in the spring. We will see how to protect our gardens with row covers, cold frames, polytunnels, or a greenhouse, how to enrich our soil with organic matter and nitrogen, as well as minimizing weeds. I want to encourage you to take a soil sample now. Collect soil from several locations in your garden. Dig to a depth of 6 inches. Mix all your samples together in a clean container. Go to the Extension Office and get one of these sample bags and fill out all the info. Fill the bag up with your soil sample and bring it by the Extension Office with $9. When you get the results back, then you will be able to amend your soil in about February in time for your spring planting in April. Select cold hardy and quick maturing crops. Cold crops are all descendants from wild cabbage. Some examples are broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, Georgia collards, kale, kohlrabi, mustard, and turnips. The greens group are all cold hardy and they include arugula, Asian greens, celery, leaf lettuce, peas, and spinach. And lastly, there are the root crops of beets, carrots, onions, parsnips, radishes, and rutabagas. Here are some cultivars that have proven reliable here in Georgia. For broccoli, there's Marathon, Pac-Man, and Premium Crop. For cabbage, there's Blue Dynasty, Bravo, and Early Round Dutch. For carrots, there's Chantonet and Scarlet Nantes and Sweet Bites. For cauliflower, there's Absolute, Early Snowball, and Graffiti. For collard greens, there's Blue Max and Georgia Southern. For kale, Blue Armor and Dwarf Siberian and Vates. For lettuce, there's Butter Crunch, Butter Head, and Romaine. For radishes, there's Champion and Cherry Bell and Scarlet Globe. For spinach, there's Melody and Winter Bloomsdale. Since this is September 30th, we can still plant arugula, beets, carrots, lettuce, spinach, and turnips from seed. But in October, we're going to have to be planting out transplants of broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, Georgia collards, kale, and peas if we're going to harvest them in time for winter. By November, it's too late for carrots and peas. Vegetables that can survive a light frost are said to be half hardy. Those vegetables are beets, cauliflower, cabbage, kohlrabi, lettuce, mustard, peas, rutabagas, and Swiss chard. Hardy vegetables will survive a heavy frost. Those include broccoli, broccoli rob, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, Georgia collards, kale, radishes, spinach, and turnips. Crops that will easily overwinter and can be harvested next spring include arugula, broccoli rob, garlic, kale, especially Tuscan kale, leeks, onions, and spinach. I've included this slide to remind you to plant some edible winter hardy flowers in your garden such as pansies and violas. Here are some of the effects of shorter days and cooler temperatures on food production. The cons are the days are shorter and the nights are cooler, which slows plant growth. 
Less sunlight means plants have less time to make energy. The pros, however, are less pests and disease. Cold crops taste sweeter after going through a couple of light frosts. Lettuce and spinach can continue to grow without bolting. Here is a sample calculation for sowing spinach seeds in the fall. Most of this info can be found on the seed packet, such as days to germination and days to maturity. In the case of spinach, the days to germination are 7 to 10 and the days to maturity are 35. Now in the short days of fall, you have to include 14 days for slower growth. The first day of expected frost is November 13th in Bartow County. Now count back 56 to 59 days and you should sow your seeds on October 8th. Have row cover fabric and hoops ready. Because of the heat and intense sunlight outside, you should start your seeds indoors. Use seed starting mix, pre-moistened, and use grow lights. This is my own setup in my dining room. I use these mini greenhouse kits with grow light sticks on a timer. If you have a greenhouse, you can start hardier varieties in there. My husband hung up row cover fabric up to shade the seedlings from intense sunlight. You can cover the seedlings with row cover to keep them a few degrees warmer too. Before the first frost, start another round of lettuce to harvest in December. Pick the site for your garden in full sun and close to a water source. Begin preparing the soil by removing the grass, chopping down the weeds, and turning the soil over. Add organic matter, leaf mold, and well-aged manure. Here is a recommendation for fertilizer based on what you plan to grow. Remember that nitrogen evaporates out of the soil after about three months, so more will have to be reapplied after that. Two cups of 10-10-10 for heavy feeders such as broccoli, cabbage, kale, lettuce, and onions, and a 4x8 raised bed. One cup of 10-10-10 for medium feeders like beets, carrots, greens, and radishes, rhubarb, and Swiss chard. And for light feeders like peas and turnips, one half cup of 6-12-12. Compost, mulch, and leaf mold help to condition the soil. Composted manure and blood and bone meal supply your garden with the three major nutrients, nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium. Covering unused lots with clover or ryegrass fixes nitrogen in the soil, brings up trace minerals to the surface, and deters pests, weeds, and disease. In the fall, the soil is dry and clay soil forms a hard crust. You may have to plant your transplants twice as deep so they can retain moisture. Cover direct sowed seeds with potting soil or vermiculite. Lightly cover your transplants or just sowed seeds with burlap or newspaper or row cover to protect them from the sun and drying wind and to keep them moist. In October, you need to purchase transplants of your favorite crops so they will have time to grow properly. Choose broccoli, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, Georgia collards, kale, peas, or spinach, whichever your family will eat. Interplanting is important if you have limited space in your garden. You can have a fast growing crop between your regular crops of kale or Georgia collard. Choose fast-growing arugula, beets, carrots, lettuce, or radishes. Each layer provides one zone south in protection. The minimum protection is a row cover, then a hoop house, cold frame, polytunnel, and last, a cold greenhouse. You can use the row cover in each of the other structures for added protection. UV rays 
and rain penetrate through row covers. You can keep them on day and night. Bury the edges of the cover in soil or lay rocks on the edges and this will deter most insects and larger pests. Row cover is the same as Agrabond, Frost Cover or Remay and can be purchased at Tractor Supply or on the net. A hoop house can be made with cut pieces of irrigation line connected to the sides of your raised bed or buried in the ground, then covered in thin plastic sheeting. My husband made these hoop houses by slipping the black irrigation piping into the white PVC piping attached to the raised bed, then laying two clear shower curtains over them. The shower curtains are $2 at the dollar store. The UV rays go through, but they must be watered. I layered row cover inside them so the sun won't burn the crops. Coal frames can be made from old windows from a thrift store. You need to open them in the daytime for ventilation, and they must be watered. This is Christmas Day in my polytunnel. I planted lettuce, kale, collards, Swiss chard, and in the back arugula. I purchased my polytunnel from off the net. It's 10 by 10 and costs $135. The UV rays go right through the plastic, but not the rain. Cut and come again is a term for harvesting just the older outer leaves of leafy green vegetables, allowing the center of the plant to continue sending out new leaves. If you have trouble kneeling and bending, you can grow many of the coal crops in a coal greenhouse. Here are examples of onion sets, collards, and lettuce all growing in the greenhouse. You might need some row cover for shading, and you still have to water them. Fall is the right time to plant garlic. Soft neck varieties such as artichoke and silver skin, which usually don't form flower stems, grow well in Georgia. And you can plant elephant garlic now too. Choose a sunny spot, clear all weeds, and amend the soil with compost. Plant only the larger outer cloves and eat the rest. Plant the cloves two inches deep and six inches apart. Harvest in early summer and store in a dry, cool place. Because the days are shorter in the fall, you have to choose short day varieties of onions. The best cultivars for Georgia are Georgia Sweet or Vidalia, Sweet Red or Red Creole, Texas 1015, and Yellow Grand X. They all mature in about 110 days. Harvest when the neck dries and the tops have fallen over. Other onions you can grow are green bunching onions, and Egyptian walking onions, which are considered a perennial crop. Fall is a good time to do a little maintenance on any perennial fruits or vegetables. After frost, cut back old canes of raspberries and cut back asparagus two inches from the ground. Also after frost, apply mulch around the base of blueberries, rhubarb, and strawberries. Crops may have gone dormant, however, roots still need watering. Water in a hoop house and through row covers one inch a week to protect crops from harsh freezing temperatures. How to store your harvest. Canning, drying, freezing, pickling, preserving in containers is best for things like peas. Keep under cover, in-ground growing is best for root crops such as carrots. Root cellars are best for turnips. Refrigerate lettuce and kale. And store onions in an unheated attic and cabbage in an unheated basement. How to put the garden to bed. Leave vegetable roots in place but remove diseased foliage. Bag and discard. Build a compost bin or add to your present one all winter long. Plant cover crops such as clover or ryegrass after harvest 
to correct soil compaction. How to freeze certain vegetables. Beets, wash and trim, cook until tender 25 to 45 minutes, cool, peel, and pack into freezer bags. For broccoli, wash, chop into bite sizes, blanch three minutes in boiling water, dry, and pack into freezer bags. For cabbage, wash, chop into wedges, blanch one and a half minutes in boiling water, dry, and pack into freezer bags. For carrots, wash, chop into bite sizes, blanch two minutes, and pack in a freezer bag. For peas, shell, blanch one and a half minutes, freeze on parchment lined baking sheets for one hour, then pack in a freezer bag in single layers. The Bartow Master Gardener's mission is to educate Bartow County residents about safe, effective, and sustainable horticultural practices that build healthy gardens, landscapes, and communities. Here are some resources that are available to help you with your growing. Thank you for listening.